Good evening. I'd like to call to order this April 26, 2022 school board work session. Ms. Goodell, could you please take the roll? Uh, yes, Dr. Dimmick. Here. Ms. Downs. Here. Dr. Gould. Here. Dr. Ortiz. Here. Mr. Reitinger. Here. Ms. Silverman. Here. And Ms. Tice. Here. Thank you. Thank you. If you could all join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. If I could please have a motion to adopt the agenda. Yes, thank you, Dr. Ortiz. I move to adopt the agenda as presented. Thank you. Could I have a second? Second. Thank you, Vice Chair Gould. All those in favor say yes. 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 All those opposed say no. Great. Motion carries. And we will move on into our work session now. And we'll be starting. Um, with uh, item 2.01 collective bargaining update and so I wanted to give the school board an update as was promised uh, you all will remember that um, just recent at our last meeting uh, this board adopted or approved uh, a, that the um, that we form a committee a special committee that would draft a collective bargaining resolution uh, for your consideration and that committee had its first meeting last week and had its second meeting today so I wanted to just give you a brief update on that. And I know um, Dr. Dimmick will be um, joining in as well and, and perhaps Dr. Noonan. So wanted to let you know that the membership of that committee, uh, Dr. Noonan is our chair and I asked him to serve as the chair. And Ms. Goodell is on that committee um, taking our minutes and a big thank you to Ms. Goodell because she does <laughs> enough for us. So she's, we're really calling her in for some double duty here. So thank you, Ms. Goodell. Uh, our, our teacher representatives are uh, Farrell Kelly, who's representing the secondary level, Emily Donovan, who's rec representing the elementary level, um, Debbie Liang, who's representing the support staff, and um, they also have um, some legal representation, um, and their attorney is, uh, her name is Kathy Lee. And then on the management side, we have Ms. Valerie Hardy, who is our head of secondary schools, um, Kristen Michael, who's our COO, and of course, Trish Minson, who is the school board attorney. And then Sue uh, Dimmick and I are serving as the school board reps. So that's that's the committee. Um, the one thing that you know we've we've noted, the group has noted more than once um, that we don't have anyone from the operations staff on that committee. And so, you know, that's an important part of our uh, school system. And I often say that when operations is running right, you don't even realize we have operations. And so uh, that is something that we keep talking about. And um, I know that Debbie Liang as a support staff person is going to be reaching out to the operations staff to try to get their, their feedback throughout this process. Uh, so a couple of things that happened at our first meeting, sort of a housekeeping meeting, we agreed on operational norms, um, talked about really assuming positive intentions on everyone's part, the need you know, to uh, communicate clearly and constructively. Uh, we developed some essential agreements, um, making sure students are always at the forefront, making sure that, data is a, that statements are rooted in facts and data, and remembering the voice is not present again, um, our operations staff. And we also talked about really what would, what would we define as positive outcomes. Um, and we talked about really keeping kids at the center, coming up with something that's simple, fair, and practical. And then we did talk about challenges, the number one being our tight timeline. As you may remember, um, this group is supposed to come back to the school board on May 31st with a, uh, resol a proposed resolution that the school board would consider. So, um, <laughs> I'm echoing, sorry. Uh, okay. Got it? Okay. So, uh, Dr. Noonan did remind the committee that the school board has the final authority on whether to accept or reject the proposed resolution or we can modify it. So that was made clear. That was our first meeting. Our second meeting was just uh, a couple hours ago. And today's meeting, we dug in a little bit more on the scope of what a resolution would look like. And um, Dr. Dimmick and I talked about the fact that um, you know, as a school board, we want to make sure that um, the resolution is not too broad. So, for example, something something that, and this is talking about items that could be bargained for, bar bargained on. And so, one would be, 
you know, if you listed ours, well, ours is very, very broad. And so um, Dr. Dimick and I explained that that would be, um, that would give us some, some pause because we don't want things that are too broad and not understanding what really, um, what, what, how that's defined. So we talked about that and um, the teachers, of course, had some thoughts too of what, what they, you know, in terms of the scope. So we went back and forth um, about it was a very good conversation, I think very honest and um, we listened to each other. Uh, one of the things that as Dr. Dimmick and I were talking about it, we talked about the fact that for us as a school board, we're elected by the community. So when there are certain things like the school calendar or the start and end times of a school day, things that our community um, really expect us to be in charge of and that you know we're listening to their feedback on those, those are things that we wouldn't really see that would be on the table to be bargained for. But what we did talk about is a cal calendar using that example, even though we might not want to say, say that that would be something that we would bargain over, we could include um, members of the, um, the exclusive um, representative in that calendar process. So there's an official, much more formalized um, communication piece to that calendar so they would have more formalized input. And so we talked about a lot of, I think we all agreed, both the whole room agreed that a lot of this comes down to communications and maybe formalizing some of our uh, methods of communications. And um, I think that's it. So we, we, that was the gist of the conversation. It was, it was very good and positive. And, you know, I think we all, um, you know, we see things differently, but I think we can definitely find a middle ground. Our next meeting, we're going to be talking about really getting into the nitty gritty of what would, what we, what we could buy, what we could bargain for. Um, and so what I'm going to ask you, and, and I'll ask Dr. Dimmick to jump in and cover what I missed or correct me if I misstated anything, but um, what I will be doing, and I'll ask the school board um, really to, you know, it's, it's your, your responsibility, our responsibility, just keep up with what's going on in these meetings. So I'll be sending you out the minutes after each meeting. We just approved the minutes from the first meeting, so I'll be sending those out too shortly. And please just really read through those um, so that you're familiar. And if you have any questions, please reach out to Dr. Dimmick or myself. And also, we're working on an actual list of items that would be um, that we would consider bargaining for, and we're trying to categorize those, whether they would be salaries or benefits or working conditions, and that's what we'll be digging into deep. But I'll also send you that list so you have a sense of what are these things that we're talking about in these meetings. So I think once you read the minutes and those other accompanying documents, I think you all will have a better sense of um, some of the conversations that have been going on in these meetings. Dr. Dimmick, please. Oh, thanks. Um, Chair Downs, you've done a great job of summing up where we are, so I don't really have a whole lot to add. I would just say that, that we are having good conversations, um, and I think this compiling a list of, of items is useful because it, it is an opportunity for us to understand where our staff is coming from and what issues they are interested in. Um, I, I guess I would like to remind the board that we did, we, we, in our our vote um, earlier this month, um, did you know we we came to the table sort of agreeing to engage in collective bargaining and and you know we have a draft resolution we brought they have a draft resolution they brought and our draft resolution already includes um, 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 wages and benefits so we we've already gone. We are already there. Um, I just, I'm also saying that since I think most of the Northern Virginia community in general is not paying attention to, to this, and I'm hoping that our community, you know, at least knows it's going on. So if we mention it at each meeting, maybe our community will register that, you know, yes, okay, this is happening, and I will pay attention. Thank you, Dr. Dimmick. Uh, Dr. Noonan, do you have anything to add? Okay. No, He's you. doing, and I'm happy to report he's um, doing an admirable job as chair of the committee. <laughs> um, any questions from the school board? Quick question about the, yes. uh, what's the, the intervals of meeting uh, that you all are meeting? How's it, how often is that happening each week? Yeah. So we're meeting twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays for an hour and a half. Uh, so we met Thursday and we met today and then we'll meet again on, on this coming Thursday. So pretty much every Tuesday and Thursday with, I think, one exception until May 31st. So, yes, Ms. Silverman. Do you have a calendar or a schedule that, of 
what you hope to achieve at each, each meeting just so we stay on track on the timeline? Yeah, we can send you definitely um, some of the, uh, we don't have like a set calendar, but things that we're looking to do at the next meeting. You know, I think um, we've really tried to uh, stay, it's tough, it's an hour and a half meeting. And so, and you know, we don't want, if we're making progress in our conversations, we don't want to, well, I'm speaking for, for Dr. Noon, he's the chair, but I think, you know, when, when, when we're making progress as a con with the conversation, we sort of want to keep that going. And so we don't, we don't always hit everything. Like I think we were hoping we would have already um, dug into that list today, but we're going to have to wait till, till Thursday and also give the teachers a chance to sort of bounce things off the staff to see are other things on that list that that we need to add that aren't already on there so I'll send you that you'll see on the agendas that will say like next time we're going to try to talk about this and that thank you for to both of you and to uh, Dr. Noonan for working on this any questions from uh, those joining remotely okay all right, well, that's it. We will keep you uh, posted and, and keep you updated at each meeting. And as I said, I will send you shortly, send out shortly the minutes from the last meeting, as well as that list I told you that we're working on as a group. So, um, so thank you to everyone for your input. And uh, we appreciate the, the teacher's time and, uh, and also the staff's time who've, who've joined us. So we'll be moving on now to section 2.02 .02, CIA data presentation update. And I'll turn that over to Dr. Noonan. Thank you, Chair Downs. Good evening, everybody. It's nice to see all of you both virtually and in person. Um, this evening we have an opportunity uh, for part one of our um, annual data presentation. And tonight's presentation um, from Mr. Bates and, and Dr. Weilenman um, really is to sort of set the table, if you will, for what you will see in the data presentation that's coming up. Um, and part of the reason that I say will be coming up is because we don't really have any data to share with you because of the time of year. Um, typically, we give the data presentation in the early fall. Um, but, but tonight, um, what you're going to hear is uh, what is it that we're collecting? Why is it that we're collecting what we're collecting? Um, and, and how it's going to be presented. We um, had a presentation not too long ago, I want to say probably two or three months ago, um, with the board, and there was some good feedback um, that Dr. Weilenman and Mr. Bates took in. And tonight, um, looking forward to hearing what they are going to share with us, um, but also want to just sort of manage expectations that tonight you're not getting data, um, but it's more about information of what it is that you're going to be getting and, and why. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Bates. Thank you, Dr. Noonan, and uh, thank you, Chair Downs and Vice Chair Gould and the rest of the board, um, those in person and those uh, who are remote. As Dr. Noonan said, this will be one of um, two presentations. This evening, we really wanted to um, be able to share with you some of the work that we do out of the Office of Assessment and Accountability, which falls under um, the Curriculum Instruction and Achievement Office, and look more specifically at um, how we are collecting data, our assessment for students, also state compliance measures, and overall data collection and, and reporting. We know that, um, as Dr. Noonan shared, that it, it's important that when we, even the very mention of data presentation, the, um, typically the first thought is we're gonna look at student data metrics and, and take a dive into how our, um, are our students performing, um, how, what are uh, potentially some of the growth measures, and we're gonna get into that, but, but not in, in that presentation. Just to give you um, a little insight, and you can move on to the next slide, please. Um, but, but to give you a little um, insight, and the next slide has our, our um, purpose for this evening, but where we are currently, um, we're currently, um, great, thanks. But we're, we're currently um, starting our SOLs and our VAP assessments. Our AP and IB assessments are going to begin in May and go into the um, early, early June timeframe. And then also our um, STAR and our VKRP, which is our Virginia Kindergarten Readiness, as well as our PALS will begin in the May, May timeframe and go into the June timeframe. So, we really wanted to, one, not, um, not delay the presentation, but 
take advantage of an opportunity to share how are we 